Hello everyone, welcome to back my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. At Society, Mena and Christine reunite as the author is in town for a few days. She's over the moon that her son, Chance, finally has a job that won't get him shot. She couldn't be prouder of him. Jill better keep him happy or else. Christine confides that she could use a friend. Nina guesses, because of Danny. She asks what happened between them again. Christine replies, Phyllis. Christine details how she tried to take the high road, but the news of their weekend getaway set off Phyllis. She got under her skin. That woman. She knows it wasn't a good look, and it really rattled Danny. Mina blames Phyllis for pushing her buttons. She offers to strangle her. Christine warns that Danny's backed away from both of them. She fumes that the judge should have put Phyllis away for murdering Stark. Nana urges Christine not to give up. Christine admits she's not happy with Danny's behavior, which is ludicrous. Nana agrees. Christine complains that he keeps saying he cares for both of them, which fuels the fire. The fact that he could have any sort of attraction for her, it's so disturbing. Nana suggests she back away and create some distance. Let Danny know, with your actions, that he's in danger of losing you again. When he sees her pulling away, he'll realize what's at stake and get with the program. At the GCAC, Phyllis walks in just in time to hear Danny planning his tour over the phone. She confronts him about planning to leave just as they're so close to getting back together. Danny rants about her not being able to respect reality. He has no romantic feelings for her. Phyllis feels something powerful between them, whereas he and Christine are like watching paint dry. She understands why he's hesitating. She didn't expect this either. Danny doesn't buy what she's saying. He tells her this is exhausting. He's added dates and it's time he left Genoa City. Phyllis muses that dates can be changed. Is there anything I can do to change your mind? Danny snaps, not a thing. Phyllis supposes Danny's leaving then, and that's that. He says he's leaving in two weeks. Phyllis wants to have dinner together before then. Just a dinner with me. To say goodbye before I have to share you with the rest of the world. Danny says they'll set something up in a week or so. Phyllis asks, how about tonight Nikki arrives at her office with a bodyguard and gushes over a bouquet of flowers? It turns out they're from Seth thanking her for being a good friend. She sends the bodyguard out and calls Seth, who is on the patio at Crimson Lights. She tells him the flowers are beautiful. Seth thanks her for being kind. He says he has news and asks if she can meet him for a coffee. When he says he's not drinking, Nikki says she'll come with her bodyguard. At the ranch, Victor greets Victoria, Cole, and Claire. Victoria says she was just showing her daughter her guest suite. Claire gushes about the bedroom. She tells Victor the place is like a fantasy. Victoria tells her there's a spring-fed lake as well. Victor asks if she rides. Claire would love to learn. Cole says there are plenty of people to teach her. Claire is grateful and thanks them all. Victor tells her once the Jordan saga comes to an end, she can decide where she wants to stay. With your parents or here, you're a Newman now. That will never change. Victoria hugs Claire. Claire hopes to prove herself worthy. Cole says that's not how family works. You don't have to prove a thing. Victor assures her she already has by wanting to help them bring Jordan to justice. Claire hates what she's done to them, and to her. She doesn't feel any connection to her. If Nikki hadn't stopped her that day in the cabin, all she'll ever be to her is a threat to be dealt with. Victor says he started the ball rolling. The news of her release has hit the media. He's sure that once her aunt gets wind of it, she'll reach out. Nikki and her bodyguard arrive at Crimson Lights, where Esther asks about the man behind her. Nikki confirms he's her security and orders a tea, assuring Esther everything will be fine. She then joins Seth on the patio. He thanks her for freeing up time to meet with him and asks, what's the deal with the guard? Does it have to do with the woman who forced vodka on her? Nikki confirms that the woman has escaped from prison. 
Seth can't believe that the woman would come after her again. Nikki says she's insane and obsessed with blaming her for things she had no part in. At the dive bar, Jordan searches Claire's name online and muses, OK, Claire, where are you now? She finds a report that Claire has been taken in by the Newmans and Fumes. Claire, don't you see what they're doing? They're going to destroy you, just like they destroyed my sister.